Hi guys, welcome to another weekly reading vlog. It is actually Wednesday today. Um, <laughs> Monday and Tuesday was a bit odd. I was fine but I wasn't fine and I ended up having panic attacks and things. So I just didn't really feel like talking to a camera. But here I am. <laughs> I haven't really done anything too exciting this week anyway. I've just been at uni. Admittedly, I'm not going to say too much right now because I do have a few things to kind of haul. But I do need to collect two parcels so I'm just going to save that until tomorrow I think and do one big talk through. But I just thought I'd jump on right now and tell you what I'm reading because the current bane of my life is this book. <laughs> it's Animals People by Indra Sinha and this basically it follows a boy who lives on the streets of India and when he was younger there was an accident with an American factory of some sort which meant that loads of chemicals got into you know the ground and the water and everything and a lot of people within this area ended up really really ill. So this boy as he was growing up his spine ended up bending so much that he now walks on all fours and because of this he ended up being called Animal. Now we follow him as a 19 year old and he's very much used to this lifestyle, he doesn't really want to be called human, he does want to be an animal of sorts because he doesn't feel like he's restricted by other people's laws and whatnot. And there was a plot line with people trying to get compensation for this accident and also there's a doctor who comes over to try and help. But ultimately this does follow Animal's point of view and his experience of things. So I'm just over 100 pages in and it took me an awful long time to get through those 100 pages. This is not a book for me. First of all, I just don't really like following people's everyday life, no matter who they are, really. <laughs> this is also quite difficult to get into just because Animal does speak slightly differently than we do. It sometimes spells the word wrong to kind of put his accent within the text, which I personally don't like. I don't think that's a very effective way of doing things a lot of the time. And in this one, it does only do it here and there, so it just seems really random. Like, it's not... It's not really giving me his voice all that much. But then it does also swap out between a couple of other languages, like there'll be random bits of French and his own nonsense language at points. And I just don't want to sit and have to translate it. <laughs> also the book is just vulgar. It's not even something that can be denied. We were literally talking about it in the seminar that we had today. He does talk about his sexual feelings a lot and it's not even that that bothers me. It's mainly just like, it's just when he's talking about like bodily fluids and where he goes to the bathroom and things, I'm just like... I don't really need to read that. <laughs> it is proven to be an interesting one because it is kind of set up as if it's a non-fiction book but I find it glaringly obvious that it's not non-fiction. <laughs> but that is the point of the module, it's like what is fiction, where do the lines blur and whatnot. It will be an interesting one, I'm just having to literally force my way through it, so... I am still reading Lady Chatterley's Lover, although I haven't read any more of it since last week's vlog so I'm still 50 pages in. Don't really have an opinion on that one so far. And I'm also reading The Testament still by Margaret Atwood and I'm about 170 pages into that one. Really, really enjoying it. I do find it very different to The Handmaid's Tale and I actually went to a book club for it yesterday where we talked about it, even though I haven't finished it. I just wanted to talk about it. <laughs> and I have a feeling that come the end, I will have a lot of things to say about it because even from where I am now, I do think it's glaringly obvious what the kind of plot twists or just even what the plot is. And also the writing is just completely different to The Handmaid's Tale. I don't think it's as impactful, but I am enjoying it. So I don't know, I, I need to pinpoint why because it's really confusing. Like everything I've just listed, is a bad thing and yet I'm enjoying it. So I am looking forward to reading more and seeing where I end up. I am hoping to finish it this week but we are on Wednesday and I have a lot of university reading to be doing and not much time so <laughs> we'll see how that goes. But for now I'm going to get in the bath and then I need to edit my university book haul because that's going up on Friday so that will already be up when this video is so I'll link it down below if you're interested. But yeah I will catch up with you tomorrow. This whole vlogging thing is just not working this week. So it's now Thursday, it's 11pm. Um, haven't vlogged anything this week really. But I thought I'd come at you with a little bit of a haul. Not a book haul, just a random haul because I have gained a few things this week so why not? <laughs> so I'm actually going to start with one of the most exciting things because 
I was sent something and I love it so much. So. If you know me at all then you'll know that on pretty much a daily basis I use my green Kanken backpack but another Swedish brand called Gaston Luger actually offered to send me another backpack and I just fell in love with them. The backpacks looked so amazing and so they sent me one which is so exciting. So I have had a look at this already and guys it's just, it's so me, it is green again because that's that's why I live in. I'm always wearing green. <laughs> oh, I can't wait to show you. It's so good. So first of all, I'm going to show you that this actually came with a tiny, well, not tiny, a small clear bag, which I guess you could use as a makeup bag or something, and it's probably what I'll be doing because the bag that I'm using for my makeup at the minute is a bit grim, so. But the really exciting thing... Da -da -da. Look at this guys! Oh my god, I love it so much. It's just... Is this not just me in a backpack? So this green is a kind of really thick canvasy material. It feels such good quality and then this is leather, but I say leather because it's not actually real leather, it's vegan leather. And this backpack has so many pockets and things on it, so we obviously have this front pocket which just pops on open and then there's also a zip underneath so that you can keep everything nice and safe. I've just taken <laughs> the protective thing off but yeah so you can open that and then there's just a little zip right there. And then when you open it up, this is really difficult to do one-handed, it's red on the inside, has one of these drawstrings and the red just carries on through the inside. We have the brown tag there and there's three pockets just here so it is, ugh, I'm really bad at showing this sorry but there is another pocket here and then on that there are two more inside and then in case that wasn't enough pockets on the back there is actually another secret pocket so that you can have important things easy accessible but against your back so that they're safe. Obviously I will take off these white things when I start using it. This is the classic backpack in olive and brown and I think I did get the biggest one because I just carry around so much stuff and even though I do already have a green backpack I'm so excited to just have like this brown detailing on it. I think the colours on this are just absolutely stunning, it's very me. I can see myself using this all the damn time and like I said it just feels so nice and you can tell that it's gonna last many many years. <laughs> on the bottom as well it just has this kind of like sturdy stand I guess. I don't know. I'm really bad at explaining backpacks because I'm just like it's a bag. It's a beautiful bag, but it's a bag. <laughs> so like I said, Gaston Luger did very kindly send this to me, so thank you so, so much. I'm just slightly overwhelmed because this is exactly something that I would use on a daily basis and you probably will see me using this in this vlog because I think over the weekend I'm going to be doing some woodland walking and if this doesn't scream woodland walking then I don't know what does. <laughs> But because Gaston Luger did send me this, I do also have a discount code for you guys, so I will leave that down in the description box, along with any information and a link to this specific bag if you want to check it out for yourself. I just cannot stop staring at this. What is it about Swedish brands making, like, the best backpacks? They're, they're doing good. Sweden's doing good. <laughs> I'm glad that I've shown that now because I've been dying to use it and I just haven't wanted to fill it with all my stuff and then empty it again, so... I'm excited to use it. I'm very excited. <laughs> I do have a very specific outfit that I want to wear when I go for my woodland walk as well. I don't know why I think of these things. I just come up with outfit ideas that I want to try and then because I was working today and I'm working tomorrow, don't really get the chance to. So the weekend, there's probably going to be some slight lookbook style video shots while in the woodlands because aesthetic. Speaking of which though, the outfit that I really want to try is mainly based around this next item because I've been looking for something like this for the longest time and shock horror, it's green. Again. <laughs> so this is actually a very crinkled midi skirt. It's very long. Well, it's a midi skirt so it's mid-length. 
It's in my favourite colour and it just has these buttons down the front. As I said, I'm very creased right now because it was sent through the post. <laughs> But I do want to get into wearing midi skirts more, I just find it really hard to find ones that I like. But because green's my favourite colour, I have been searching for one that is basically just this. But <laughs> you will see it a lot clearer when I wear it over the weekend, so I'm going to stop talking about it for now. <laughs> Another item of clothing that I have gotten is not my usual kind of thing, but I was just kind of casually looking through Depop because I am trying to swap over clothes by into a more sustainable way of doing it, so buying second hand and things like that. And I do like looking through Depop every so often for that. I don't do it too often because I don't actually buy clothes all that often. I feel like I'm getting a few now because I don't have many like autumnal or wintery clothing. I will wear skirts and stuff during the winter but essentially I just have a lot of jumpers that are very very worn because I've had them for years and stuff. And also I just don't have many trousers or I don't know like lower half things. I've just been wearing the same trousers for like four years. Anyway, long babble aside, I bought some jeans in this kind of beige colour? <laughs> I don't know what colour this is. It's showing up a very different colour on camera. They are a bit darker in person but because I'm using artificial lighting it's showing up a bit weird. But I don't actually wear jeans all that often, I find them quite uncomfortable and I much prefer wearing skirts, dresses when I have them or I don't know if you've seen me wear them before but I wear these black flared trousers quite a lot. But I saw these and I really like the colour of them. I don't usually like wearing blue which is partly the reason why I don't go to those jeans that often because most of them are blue. I really liked how these seemed to fit the model in the picture and it turned out that she was quite similar sizes to me so I decided to go for it and these fit me exactly how I wanted them to. I love them. And with it being a beige tan colour as well, it's definitely something that I'll wear much more often than the jeans I already own. The quality of them is incredible. Like, these are so thick and to say that they're secondhand, you wouldn't know it at all. These are just... they look completely brand new. I will end up turning up the cuffs like this, just for stylistic choices. <laughs> I was really scared of buying them because I couldn't try them on since I was buying them online, but... It worked out very well and I'm very happy about it. <laughs> so the final thing I'm going to show you is some more candles from Becca's shop because I am ridiculous. But I couldn't resist because Becca has actually teamed up with Gavin to bring out a couple of candles for the Believeathon readathon which is happening in November. That readathon is based around children's books or middle grade, whatever you want to call it. And we have two candles out for it which I'm very excited about. So. This one is Enchanted Dominion, which is apparently red apples, orange and cinnamon. As you can imagine, smells really quite autumnal, but sweeter than you would imagine because the apple scent of it is much more like sweet apple rather than the spicy apple that you would expect when I say autumnal, but it still does smell autumnal, so it's really, really nice. And as you can see, this one is just pink with some gold glitter on top. And then we also have Frozen Forest, which is this very light blue, obviously reminds everybody of Frozen. And on the top, we have more stars and glitter. This one is Pear, Cotton Candy, Vanilla and Cherry. And as Becca said in her video where she announced these, this is definitely a dupe for Luscious Snow Fairy. So if you like the really sweet scent of Snow Fairy, this would be the candle for you. It smells pretty much exactly like it. I'd say it smells slightly more like bubblegum, but actually, <laughs> hang on a second, hang on a second. We're going to do a smell test. Not a taste test, a smell test. So we have Luscious Snow Fairy. Very sweet, very nice. And then Frozen Forest, which is also very sweet and very nice. You know what, I would say these are pretty much identical. I'd say this one smells slightly more like bubblegum, as I said originally, but... It's like barely perceptible. Oh my god, I'm just gonna... J just leave me here guys, I'm, just, I'm set for the evening, bye. So yes, very very happy about this as well. <laughs> But then, because Becca is an absolute gem of a friend, when I opened this parcel, where I definitely ordered two candles, 
there was a third one in there. So she just sent me this one because she could and I'm very very grateful for that because it honestly made my day. So this one is Goddess of Dreams and I believe inspired by Strange the Dreamer with the orange of Muse of Nightmares. On top we have lots of silver glitter and this one apparently smells like tart and sugary plums. Oh, this isn't usually one that I would go for but I do really really like it actually. Oh my god. Oh. My nose is feeling a bit tingly after all this sniffing. <laughs> So yes, I am very, very happy right now. I have so many of Becca's candles, it's actually ridiculous. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I have eight of Becca's candles, that is... It's ridiculous really, but at least my house will smell delightful. <laughs> So thank you Becca for those. I will of course leave a link to Becca's candle website and Becca's channel down in the description box. I believe she has discount codes for the website down in her description boxes as well so definitely go and have a peep at those. But that is my haul pretty much covered. I haven't read anything. Actually that's a lie. I have read about 50 pages of Lady Chatterley's Lover. I still don't really have any thoughts on it though so I'm just like have I been reading it? Because I have zero opinions. We have got the classic case of the working class Yorkshireman accent being incredibly thick and even though I'm from Yorkshire, if I wasn't reading it via audiobook then I probably wouldn't be able to read it. <laughs> Saying that though, I don't know how it's written, I haven't actually been following along this time with the book. I probably will do over the weekend just because I do need to speed up my reading pace so I probably will both read and listen at the same time because that's what I usually do but yeah, I... I don't know, I am quite enjoying the audiobook. I do think it's really good. I am listening to it on script. I really, really like the narrator's voice. She's very good at doing different voices for different people. But for now, it is almost midnight, so I'm going to go and probably read. I will get ready for bed, get all cozy, and read some more of the Testaments, I think. I've been struggling to sleep, so I don't know when I'm going to go to sleep. I have been trying to set my, my sleeping schedule slightly earlier because I do want to be able to wake up naturally around 7am in the mornings which I do wake up around that time most days but I want my kind of sleeping pattern to be in accordance to that and not have to be because of the alarm if that makes any sense. I don't know. I'm just... I'm babbling. I'm gonna go. <laughs> I'm gonna get ready for bed. I'm gonna read and hopefully I'm going to sleep. I've not had much luck with that lately but I'm tired so it needs to happen at some point. <laughs>
Nelson Day and this vlog has been a little bit of a train wreck. <laughs> I feel like I've just either not vlogged or nothing's happened or both. <laughs> but I just thought I'd come in and give one final update before ending this vlog because I actually finished reading a book. Can we just praise the Lord for that because good God I've been reading these three books for like what feels like 10 years. I did actually finish reading Lady Chatterley's Lover today and I didn't like it all that much. I was just bored all the way through. I feel like this was just 300 pages of the woman being like, but you do love me, right? Because the main affair that you know about starts at page 50. So then it's just 250 pages of an affair. <laughs> And obviously this has gone through a lot of censorship because it's quite explicit in its conversations about sex but I don't know, I just, it didn't bother me and I didn't really think too much while I was reading it so I was just like, okay, well, I read that. <laughs> so I did rate it two stars but I do imagine that I'll find actually studying it much more interesting and getting into people's mindsets towards it and whatnot. I think I'll find that more interesting than the book itself so... Hopefully that is the case because I don't want to have read this for nothing. <laughs> Over the weekend I did also annotate the introduction to The Odyssey and I found it really interesting actually. I just, I can't wait to actually know what I'm talking about when it comes to Greek mythology and stuff. I do still need to make my way through the translator's note but I think I'll be doing that tomorrow maybe. And then I do intend on all of the passages that are used as examples in the introduction. I want to find them in the book and make notes on them. Like in correspondence to what it said in the introduction and also see if there are any specific passages that I can single out. And so I'm going to just be continuously working on this for quite a few months I think. So you will see this pop up again and again in all of my vlogs but yes. I feel like I've actually made a start on my dissertation now which is very comforting. <laughs> And yes, for the rest of today, I'm just going to be putting on some music and tidying like hell because my room and my house has become an absolute state. Like, it's just, I get so stressed out when things are a mess, but my bedroom becomes so messy so quickly because I only really have like one or two surfaces. So I put things on my windowsill and then I have my desk. The only other furniture that I have in my room are my bookshelves, my wardrobe and my bed. So I feel like because my desk is only really the one surface I can use, everything just gets piled up on it so quickly throughout the week and then it's just a mess instantly. So I do need to tidy that today because it's stressing me out. And then once I have done that, I do need to edit this entire vlog and also hopefully read more of the Testaments by Margaret Atwood. I am about halfway through this and I do want to get it done as soon as possible because I have realised how little time I have to read both The Bone Season for Bonathon and The Gospel of Loki for Mythtake, both of which I need to read in October. So this did not go well planning wise because I also have all my university work to do. So I am slightly stressed by all the reading but it's fine. I'm, I'm gonna have to set myself like daily page goals and just force myself to read. The thing is I probably could read a lot more than I am doing at the minute but I'm just tired all the time and so I don't. So I just need to get over that somehow. <laughs> Either way I do want to get through the testaments because I am really enjoying it and it is a really really quick read. It's written very differently to The Handmaid's Tale so I'm finding it very accessible but also in a way that makes it really easy to read. So I don't think it'll take me too long to finish this and I'm hoping I can get at least... So this section I have left, I'm hoping to get at least halfway through that bit tonight. But I don't know if I will because as I just said, I do need to edit this entire vlog and get that scheduled for tomorrow. But none of that is too interesting to film so I am just going to end this vlog here. I hope you enjoyed it even during the train wreck that it was. <laughs> Hopefully next week's vlog will go a little smoother but if you did enjoy it then please remember to leave a like and a comment to let me know that you're here. If you're not subscribed already then please consider doing that. But for now I hope you're having a lovely day and I shall see you next time with a new video. Bye!